Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Games From Scratch, and it's my first ever top 10 list. And don't worry, I'm not going to become one of those clickbaity channels. It's just a few videos back, I mentioned a free product. I'm not going to mention it too much detail because it's on this list. But I said this is definitely one of my top 10 free game development tools. And then kind of thought, hey, you know what, I should put that list together. A lot of people encouraged me to do so. I spent a few days thinking about it, and that's what this list is. This is my top 10 free tools out there. Free as in price, not free as in Libra, although a lot of these are also open source projects as well. And of course, this is wholly opinion. So this doesn't mean that these are the 10 best programs out there. These are just the 10 best that I came up with. And if it's not on this list, it's possibly because I forgot about it, or maybe I just don't agree. But anyways, if you think something should have been on this list that wasn't, let me know in the comments down below. And when I went through my list when I was at the end, there's not a whole lot of real shockers on this list, so you may not learn any new programs, but there's a reason for that. You rise to the top because you're a great program. If you're a great program, hopefully people have heard about you. But maybe this is a chance to expose you to some new software that's out there. The criteria of being on this list is you are free, as in commercially free, and you are used for game development. What is not on this list, however, is any game engines, frameworks, or libraries in any way whatsoever. Maybe I'll do that as a separate list at some point in time. I'll get hooked on this whole top 10 clickbait list thing and just go nuts with it. So, without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, these aren't necessarily in a specific order, although I did probably order them subconsciously from worst to best, but... Uh, they're not intended to be that way. This is literally just 10 great game development tools that happen to be free. And I will throw all of the links down below. So if you want to download any of these individual products, the link will be there. All right, enough preamble. Let's jump right in. So number 10, we have Inkscape. Now, Inkscape is a vector graphics painting package. Uh, it's kind of the only option you've got out there for completely free, other than Gravit, I think, is another option that's free. And I think Inkscape is just the most mature of those particular options. Now, personally, I actually use a, a commercial package here, so it's not one of those ones that totally convinced me to use it. I don't like some of the usability, but there are people out there that can do some just outright amazing things with Inkscape. Now, the nice thing is with vector graphics is they're pretty much resolution independent. So once you've drawn it at one, one resolution or, you know, one time, you can then do it and use those graphics on a multitude of different devices. So there's a lot of appeal to the uh, vector graphics look. And... Inkscape is free and open source, so it definitely deserves a place on this list. Next up, this one's actually a bit of a tie, and this is not the sexiest program you've ever heard at all, and it's kind of an ecosystem as opposed to just a single program, but Git. Git has changed the way that we develop, and Git is uh, an open source or sorry, it's a source code repository. It is open source as well, but it is basically a way of uh, backing up your code and collaborating with other people so that your changes don't all smash all over each other. If you are not using some kind of a version control system, even if you work by yourself, you are making a mistake. And Git is the number one out there. Number one in terms of popularity, probably not number one in terms of technology. I'm not going to get into that particular argument. There are other options such as SDM, SDN and Perforce. Uh, but Git, again, is the market leader, and there's GitHub, which is an implementation of the Git standard and probably the most popular online uh, code repository there is. So just by that fact alone, they win. Now, personally, I'm not that diligent about using Git. I find as a single developer, the kind of stuff I do, I do a lot of one-off code that never, you know, it's, it's mostly for examples and that kind of stuff. I mostly rely on Dropbox, if I'm honest, but don't use Dropbox for version control. It works, but you really don't want to go down that road. So if you're working, especially if you're working with more than one person, learn Git. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to start with, but it will definitely save your ass at some point in time in the future. So so it definitely deserves a spot on this list. Next up, we have Dragon Bones. Now, Dragon Bones is a skeletal animation system. It is free and partially open source, available for Windows and Mac. Um, pretty much, you can take your 2D images, cut them up into pieces. So, for example, I could have an arm that's a forearm, a, a shoulder, and so on and so forth. And then you use bones to animate. I've actually done a video on Dragon Bones in action. It is the only free option out there. I'm not saying it is the best of the bone-based animations, but it is definitely the best of the free bone-based animation programs. Although 
there are a couple competitors coming up. I forget the names offhand. And then there are some very well-established ones in this space, including Spine, which is probably the most famous, and Spryder. But both of those are commercial, so they cannot make this list. So that's Dragon Bones. Next up, we have uh, Krita, or Krita, or I don't actually know how Krita is pronounced, but I'm going to go with Krita. And it is a 2D painting application. About a year or two ago, I wasn't that impressed with it. But in the last year or so, the updates they've gotten, the performance improvements they've had, the new features they've added, the adding of animation support, this made this the best painting package out there that's free. And in some ways, it's starting to compete with just being a great package on its own. It's not just the fact that it's free anymore. Krita is just a great paint package. So if you're looking for that painterly look, like so freehand drawing or painting look, uh, but on a computer, obviously, Krita is a great place to go. And again, it is free and open source. So uh, they have come a huge way with the most recent releases. So Krita is one of those projects that is just improving at a staggering rate. And if you are looking for a digital painting application, so if you want to create, you know, a hand drawn or painted look for your game, Krita is the program you want to check out. And again, it's free. Next up, we have Tiled. Tiled is an open source map editor. If you're creating a 2D game, Tiled is the best open source option. There's a couple others. There's Tiled. I think there's one called Mappy. A few others, but Tiled is by far and away the winner in that regard. It is also an open source project, and it is also improving quite a bit with each new release. Now, you can do a bunch of different kinds of maps using Tiled. You can do um, orthogonal maps. You can do hexagonal maps, isometric maps. Uh, you can have multiple maps that kind of are stitched together. Uh, you can do auto mapping, auto tiling. It is a cool comprehensive program that also happens to be open source. And the coolest thing with Tiled is there are run times for just about every game engine ever made. Unreal Engine, Unity, Godot, LibGDX, SFML. Pick a framework or a game engine and chances are there is a runtime for Tiled for importing and using the maps that Tiled creates. Now progressively more and more game engines are building Tiled-like functionality into them such as Unity and Godot game engine. But even then you'll still often find that Tiled is the still better. So if you're looking to create 2D maps, Tiled is the program for you. Next up, we have paint.net. Now this one's going to be controversial for number one, it is Windows only. And it's just a paint program. It's, it's kind of like Paint Shop Pro Evolved. It's a uh, great for image manipulation and that kind of thing. And I just choose it because number one, I'm primarily on Windows and it has been my go-to image editing application for never. And it just works. It's a great, great program. Um, and it's simple. It's easy to learn. It's basically like they took Paint and Microsoft Paint and just made it 30 times more functional, but still kept it easy. And on top of that, there is a full plugin system that can really make paint.net do a whole lot more. People have been developing plugins for this thing for over a decade. Now, I know that the Linux users and the Mac users among you, I think you can run paint.net through Wine and on other platforms through a layer of emulation, but the open source alternative is definitely GIMP. Now, GIMP has come a long way in the last couple of months in terms of usability. GIMP is like tries to be a Photoshop competitor. And for an open source project, it definitely works, but it is very complex. Now they're streamlining the interface and improving the performance. And perhaps in time, GIMP will replace paint.net. Uh, and if you need more complicated image processing, GIMP is definitely the place to go. So if you want an open source alternative or you're not on Windows and paint.net doesn't work for you, do be sure to check out GIMP. But I'm on Windows. I love paint.net, so it stays on my list. Next up, we have Magic of Voxel. Yep, this is the program that started it all. So this is the reason why I made this video in the first place. Magic of Voxel is a free uh, voxel painting application. It, it, a voxel is like a 3D pixel or a volumetric pixel. It is kind of like cubes in space. If you played Minecraft, you know what a voxel is. It goes back way further than that. There was a game, there was a company called Nova Logic that worked heavily in voxels. And this for a while was actually competing technology to polygonal ways of creating worlds. Polygons won and voxels kind of went by the wayside, but they're really coming back in popularity. And the cool thing about voxels and working with voxels is they're very intuitive and they're actually fairly straightforward to work with from a programmer side of things too. So voxels are definitely on the rise and Magic of Voxel just does some staggeringly good work. It's, it's a modeling program and a renderer together. There's a lot of functionality packed in there. And if you haven't checked it out, I would highly recommend you do so because it is free.
And that's why it's on this list. Now you'll notice above, it is available for Windows and Mac OS, and I just recently did a video on Magic of Oxlow because it was a 0.99.2 release. I uh, was just added, and I did a bit of an update on it at that point. As I mentioned, that's what spawned this whole video in the first place. Now, one of the things that came up repeatedly is there is no Linux client for Magic of Voxel. Now, one thing I saw repeatedly in the uh, comments, though, is it runs flawlessly on Wine with no real effort required. So if you are on one of those platforms, definitely check out Magic of Voxel. Now, on the top of that, there's also uh, Go Goxel? Uh, another one that's out there that a lot of people recommended. I think it was G-O-X-E-L. So if Magic of Voxel doesn't do it for you, there is an alternative out there that is also free. All right. Now we're coming up into the audio stuff. Now I've got to admit, audio is an area where I don't get into that often. And this is an area where I could probably have filled a list on its own. Uh, there are a lot of uh, programs like Sunvox or... Um, LMMS and then various free versions of digital audio workstations out there. And I will be straight out honest with you. This is a hole in my knowledge. Like I am, I'm tone deaf. I don't get into music production much. I don't understand music production much. So I don't have any DAWs on this list. And that's why you're wondering, Hey, where's Reaper or blah, 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 or blah, 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 Cubase Lite or, well, they're not on this list because I literally just don't know that area best. If you happen to be an expert in digital audio workspaces and you can make a recommendation for free ones down below, I would love to hear it because that is definitely a hole in my knowledge. And it's one of those areas where I intend to learn a bit more and I'll probably do a video about free DAWs in the future. But this isn't really a digital audio workstation. This isn't for authoring pieces. This is for editing. But I use Audacity all the time. Audacity is free, cross-platform, open source, available on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. And it is kind of the Swiss army knife for handling um, audio files. Like, for example, when I am done recording this, I am going to throw it into Audacity to mix it down to a mono file, to run it through a compressor so that the sound quality or the sound volumes are consistent, do a noise removal process, that kind of stuff. And you can also record audio in, you can run it through various special effects, uh, it's a great program if you've never used Audacity. You owe it to yourself to install it, even if you're just using it to do things like convert uh, a waveform to Ogvorbis or Ogvorbis to MP3. It is the Swiss Army Knife tool that should be in your workstation or in your um, repertoire or toolbox for sure. So that's why Audacity is where it is on this list. Now, the next one, I don't know if it's going to be controversial at all. But Visual Studio Code, we all need at least one text editor, period. Like Even if you are not a programmer, you are going to edit text in some form, be it config files, XML, JSON files, or if you are a programmer, you're going to live in your code editor. And there are a ton of options here. Um, there's, well, actually, Visual Studio Code itself is built on top of an open source visual editor from GitHub. Um, there's also Sublime Text, which is semi-free. Uh, there is, oh God, they're not even coming to me, but there are probably 50 different editors. And then of course we can go old school with things like Emacs and Vi and Vim and you name it. When it comes to text editors, this is kind of a religious debate. And my personal religion here is Visual Studio Code. And I know a lot of people out there are anti-Microsoft and do not let a Microsoft bias put you off Visual Studio Code. This program is one of the best they have created in the last decade. It's a lightweight text editor that is extensible, that has been extended to support every single kind of programming you ever wanted. If there's a programming language out there, I guarantee you, uh, if more than a few thousand people use that language, there is an extension for Visual Studio Code. There are extensions for doing things like hosting your own web server for testing inside of Visual Studio Code, full uh, source code integration or version control integration. Visual Studio Code is just one one of those lightweight Zen programs that is super extensible and even while it's being extended, it isn't getting bloated and crappy. Working in Visual Studio Code is a sublime experience. Sorry, a sublime text, kind of co-opting your name a bit there. But Visual Studio Code is just an exceptional program and this has become my go-to of choice for code and text editing. Um, and if you haven't tried it out, do so. It's on every single platform. It is completely open source. Uh, I suppose I shouldn't say every single platform. It's on Mac OS, uh, Windows, and Linux. Oh, we go into other downloads. It's on even other platforms. Uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Red Hat, Fedora, SUS. So it's 
So yeah, if you need a code editor or text editor and you haven't checked out Visual Studio Code yet, do it. It's a great program. And then, of course, the final, the, uh, I guess we'll call this number one, and I think so many of you are going to agree this is number one. Love it or hate it, you can't argue how important Blender is. Blender is the free application. Basically, if Blender did not exist, a lot of indie game development would not exist. When you look at its competitors, and I'm talking real honest-to-goodness competitors, not just, oh, Blender can do this and it's free. No, Blender competes with these programs on functionality. You're looking at programs like 3D Studio, 3D Studios Max, which is four grand. Maya, which is four grand. Cinema 4D, which is between one and four grand. Moto, which is like 1500 bucks. Blender, free. And the cool thing is with Blender 2.8, it's very polarizing. There's a lot of changes coming to Blender 2.8 that a lot of 2.79 developers or users are not overly keen about, but it is getting a much updated um, 3D viewport called EV. It is getting a usability you know, override. That's the polarizing part. It is just becoming a much more modern application for better or worse. Depends on your perspective there. But I think, honestly, this is an area where between... Uh, the rise of a whole bunch of affordable, cheap, or open source game engines. The other biggest program in this space, hands down, is Blender. Without Blender, so many people could not create 3D graphics for free. And, and that is just, as far as free game dev tools go, I don't think you can really argue that Blender is the most important one if we don't take into account game engines. If we took into account game engines, the argument gets a little bit more tricky. But I think... It's the one to end this list on. It is probably the number one free game development tool, probably to the surprise of absolutely nobody. So that is my list, my top 10 list of free game dev tools. Again, free as in money, not free as in Libra. But as I mentioned earlier, a number of these are open source as well, including, of course, Blender. And Blender is on every platform that is relevant today as well. So what did you think? Did I miss one that you would have definitely included? Or did I include one that you think, why the hell did you put that there? I'd love to know. Um, I think this will be an interesting comment section down below. And uh, again, sorry about the clickbaity top 10 kind of title, but it quite literally is a top 10 list and hopefully you learned something. I know a lot of these are fairly popular, as I mentioned at the start of the video, but they're popular for good reason and that's why they made the list. All right, see you all later. Goodbye.